All right, Tony Hartman, thank you so much. Welcome to JoeyRitter.com. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on JoeyRitter.com. You're my uh, second guest on the West Coast, making me stay up all late and stuff, but it's cool. You're worth the wait. Now, uh, Tony, um, I definitely missed the boat on you big time in the first decade of the 2000s, and I'm kind of upset about it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to lay it all on the table. Like, I think my first exposure to you, besides your band, was uh, the Texas Toast series. And Rock. I, I understood I understood it, but it was like I didn't quite get it. So I, you know, I don't know if I just watched the wrong episode when I first started. Well, Joey, let let me if I may interrupt you real quick. What didn't you get about hand drawn hunky guys in their underwear that hang out with a talking piece of bread and just spew inside jokes at each other? I, think, I, I don't see what what's not to get about that <laughs> inside joke. Well, it was the premise. I was cool with, but then when the dialogue started, I was I was like kind of waiting for the part. But um, it's okay, it's okay. Where where you redeemed yourself more than a hundred percent was uh, the animated GIF video that you did uh, a couple months ago, and um, you know, I, you know, I'm on Twitter. I click the link. I'm watching this animated GIF video. I'm laughing hysterically to the point where I'm crying. I mean, it's it's I'm just it just hit me at the right time, and I am dying laughing in my living room, and my wife's in the kitchen like, "What are you laughing at?" And I'm like, God, "He's he's he's doing an animated GIF, and and they watch music videos, and they and they they couldn't find out which music." And I'm like, just as funny as the actual video itself is my explanation of the video to my wife, and she's just looking at me like. Why did I marry you? But so you're referring to not the actual the video set to the song. You're you're talking about the video when Chris interviewed me. Yes, I appreciate it. I I was really proud of that. I think you're one of probably like four people that got that and thought it was funny. But I was I was pretty proud of that conversation. I that's was happy. that's the thing. I got it because I really think. You know, ninety percent of people we'll get we'll say ninety one percent of people probably wouldn't get the humor in that video, but I, I don't know if you scripted it out or you had an idea of what you wanted to say. You don't have to tell me because I, I actually don't want to know the answer to that. But your delivery, your nonchalant delivery of talking about you know creating the animated GIF and you tried to create music videos and there was extras at the scene and, you know, Steve Punchline stopped by and there was pizza for oh, the crew. Just brilliant. Just brilliant. Thank you. I was, I was happy with that too. I'm glad, I'm glad it, you know, had an audience. <laughs> it, oh, yes. Fun. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the video that, that sold me on you and I'm sold, uh, from, from this that point forward. Too. And, uh, all right. So, you moved to Los Angeles from Ohio. Yes. When did you do that? Um, February of this year, actually. Uh, I moved from, uh, I lived in Kent, Ohio. I was born in Cleveland, but I grew up kind of about 40 minutes uh, southeast of the city. And uh, yeah, my, uh, my fiance and I and our, and our rabbit, actually we have a pet rabbit, just packed up. We wanted to moved somewhere, and uh, we decided a while ago to, because uh, I really liked Los Angeles from visiting and everything. I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be ridiculous and completely unlike, you know, anywhere else I could have lived, but uh, it's it's gone really well. I like it so far. That's pretty cool. So you just moved to Los Angeles just to move to Los Angeles. It wasn't for a job or anything like that? Well, that and plus, I mean, we all watch Entourage. We know what it's like here. Sure. No, i it's exactly like that. I'm, I'm, I'm drama hang out like on the regular <laughs> sweep. You know, no. you, you hang out at Ra Ralph Macchio's uh, place and Oh yeah. Every day is a, every day is a cameo. That's my slogan for Los Angeles and I hope somebody picks it up. Every day is a cameo from we, someone. I think we're having a little bit of connection issues which is just fine because we're going to be talking about the 90s a lot in this conversation and in the 90s, you know, internet was choppy. So it's just it's just a throwback to the '90s here. So um, <clears throat> well, that's cool. Um, for some reason, you know, I had it in my my head that you moved to LA for, you know, a job, and 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 that's what brought you there. But that's that's cool. I, I was in Los Angeles for the first time 
about a month ago, and I love the city. I mean, it. Um, I had. I guess I had low expectations because everybody would tell me how crappy the traffic was, and you know that the the town was dirty. Not the case at all. I mean, yeah, okay, the freeway traffic sucked, but as soon as I rolled up to the hotel I was staying at, you know, which was right in Beverly Hills, you know, and it looked exactly like it does on TV with the palm trees, and, you know, I I walked by, like, the Troubadour and the Whiskey A Go-Go and stuff, and took pictures and stuff. I mean, I was only there for two days, but I loved it, and I'd go back any time. I will say two things. One, why didn't you get at me to hang out? Because... You could have hit me up on Twitter. We could have a tweet up. Well, and go ahead. You can save your answer until my next question. And two, um, actually, yeah, just going back, to it, it is a pretty clean city for, like, I mean, you're, you know, you're from the Philadelphia-ish area, correct? Right, yeah, 15 miles west of Philly. So, I mean, like, Philadelphia and New York are, like, obviously, like, New York's an insanely huge city with tons of people, and it's really dirty everywhere. And it's cool because there's a lot of people here, but they keep it pretty clean. And it's kind of the opposite where it's like dirty city, clean people in New York. Sometimes it's the other way around here. Right. Clean, <laughs> kind of filthy, disgusting people. But it's well, not bad. My answer to your uh, first question was, look, okay, we've tweeted at each other. Um, we've played you know, one show together. We have mutual friends, and that's all good. But this is actually really the first time that we've had a conversation. So I think it might have been a little weird if I was like, hey, man, I'm in town. Hit me up. Let's hang out. I don't know. I think it's maybe. Weird, I, personally, I like a little weird. Uh, okay. But, and if, if I can correct you once, we've actually played two shows together. And I, I was hoping this would come up because I want to see if you remember this. Uh, how's, the, how's the stream? Am I coming through okay? So far, so good. Yeah. Okay. Because this, this is an important memory that uh, I remember like 30% of. We, uh, the interns and Ritter, played in, I want to say, Bed, Pennsylvania. Is that a place? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was that... And the memory I have of that show is if there was, I'd say, like 14 to 20 bands on the bill. It was like an all-day thing with, uh, I think, This Island Earth was the band that set it up. Okay. I hope you're remembering this. This is a good time. I definitely remember this show, yes. It was probably like 2002, and... Uh, I remember you guys were sweet. I remember rock, we were rocking. It was the first time we'd seen Ritter, but a friend of ours like told us about uh, told us about you guys and uh, the band Sloppy Meat Eaters was yes. the big. But yep. they they left the show like they they came they set up their merch table and there was like you know just the bands there which you know there was for a fourteen band show I guess that's a semi decent crowd, but so, yeah. But I mean, everybody paid to be there. But like, yeah, I'll never forget that moment because, like, you know, we were like a younger band and we thought they were like pretty cool. And, like, kind of looked up to them, and we were excited to play with them. And I remember going up to Josh, their singer, and be like, "Oh, what time are you guys playing?" And I'll, I'll never forget this. He just kind of looks at me and goes, "Do you look around at this show? <laughs> Come on, we gotta have some pride. We're getting out of here." And I was just like, "That's so lame, you know? Like, who? You know? Like, we're all here." Like, we all want to support each other. Just set up and play. But, right. like, they're just like, you know, we, we have some pride. And, like, we just, we can't stand for something like this. And yeah. I was like, okay. And then we we all played. We had a good time. They must have had something in their set where there was a call and response thing. And they couldn't figure out what song to substitute, you know. So they had yeah. to get out of there. All right. Well, okay. Well, the first time, we actually had a show there where we drove the three and a half hours to get there, and it was canceled when we got there. And the show we just talked about was the second show we played there. Yeah. So not never a good experience in Bedford, Pennsylvania. But yeah. um, uh, that's great. Okay, so two shows we played together. And the other show, um, w what was the, the town in Ohio with the roller skating rink? Harrodsville. Okay. Harrodsville, our hometown. That maybe. was your hometown. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, let's wait a second. I think we got a connection issue, but all right, we're good. All right, so that show, um, a hilarious thing happened that night, and you and I again, we did not talk. You know, I watched your band. I thought you guys were great, and I got your CD that night, and I'd love, you know, I still have it on my uh, Google Music, and it comes up in the shuffle, brings back great memories. Um, but 
I was sitting next to your singer. Uh, what's your singer's name? Uh, Mike. We call awesome. him E Mike. E Mike. E Mike. Okay. Like, like, he was just a legend. No. Right. Right. So I'm I'm sitting next to him. And I, I, f- I feel like he was one of those guys that didn't really like to be at the merch table, but it was, it was his turn on the rotation, and he's just kind of sitting there. And, you know, it's a, roller, yeah. <laughs> it's a roller skating rink, so there's an arcade to the side. And, you know, ki- kids are just there playing the arcade games, not even paying attention to the fact that there's a show. I mean, it was a good crowd. There was definitely people there for the show, but there was kids there that just wanted to play arcade games and play skee-ball and stuff. So, some, like, overweight, out-of-his-mind drunk kid just walks up to your merch table with a bunch of, like, tickets from Skee-Ball, and he's looking at your t-shirts, and he's like, how many tickets does one of these t-shirts cost? Oh, my God. And you're singing, I forget what your singer said, but it was just the greatest perfect response that you could have to that question. He's like, yeah. We require the tickets with George Washington's face on them. And and that was just way over the kid's head. He didn't get it. And that was one of the hardest I've ever laughed. I want to know how how this kid was doing. Because it was a skating rink with no liquor license. Uh, I think the closest bar is a, at least a five-minute drive. So I want to know how this kid got so drunk at the roller hut. I, I think he was drinking in the parking lot, or maybe he was just so dumb that he appeared drunk to me. One or the other. Yeah, it could be either or. Or a little bit of both. Right. So, um, alright, so I sent you a tweet, and I said throw me some 90s references, because you know, I'm I'm big on 80s references, but from you, I mean, I think you're the best 90s reference person I know. I'm not putting you on the spot right now because we, you know, you already tweeted me about it, but there were some good ones in here. Amazing. I, <laughs> I have them right here. Um, I'm going to skip over the first two because I actually, they're, they're too obscure for me. Um, but one of them is Alien Workshop. That's tremendous. Yeah. I, I would have never thought about that for the rest of my life. That was a big part of the 90s for me was a... Uh... Alien Workshop, Airwalk, like all those all those skate companies. Now, I was the type of guy, okay, um, I shopped at Pacific somewhere, like, I, I tried to dress skater-esque, but I didn't want to wear the okay. po- the popular, like, uh, what, you know, like, uh, now I can't even, I guess like Hurley, yeah, or whatever was the top, you know, five brands of Pacific Sunwear, I would go into the t-shirt, what was that? Billabong. Billabong, uh, right, right. Bullhead was right. a good one. I I would go into like the uh you know, the back where they had the lesser known shirts and I would buy those shirts thinking you know, trying to get people to think that I was all independent and, and wore these different companies, but really I shopped at Pacific Sunwear. Mm-hmm. You know. So anyway, that's my that's my memory of Alien Workshop. That's what that made me think of. Did they have they had that at Pacific Sunwear? I don't think they had Alien Workshop at Pacific somewhere. Okay, I yeah, I had some, I had, and then there were knockoff Alien Workshops as well that were just like general alien gear. I think, and I remember my my stepbrother who I barely ever see now, but I would see him like once or twice a month. He'd come to visit, and he brought me. It was Mount Rushmore, but with alien heads, and I was like twelve, and I thought it was like the most badass thing. That's that's pretty like, awesome. Yeah. Um, which I still had it. I was I was going to ask you that, um, but yeah, Alien Workshop. I think you had to like send away for a skateboard catalog. I don't think they sold them in any stores near where I lived or anything like that. No, it was kind of like being a, like a hipster in middle school almost, like with the skater kids. Because yeah, I came, CCS was the catalog, and everything like there was just really specific stuff you could only get from CCS, and that was like. It didn't matter if you could actually skate. I was a horrible skater. <laughs> yeah. I had, like, pretty cool stuff, you know? Right, right, right. So, all right. Well, and then, okay, the other one is Pepsi Got a Habit Card. You remember that? That was my favorite because I remember the, I remember the commercials and the slogan, but I don't mm-hmm. remember the actual card. Can you explain to me what the card was? Uh, it, it was basically, a, like, a credit card. With the Pepsi logo, and when I was like nine, I think I was—we were like really young, 
when that when that came out when that was a thing and i thought it was like currency like obviously it was such effective marketing that like you know i saw that pepsi got a habit card and i was like mom i need to get that because <laughs> you know like then you know everything's set i can have anything i want like that's that's how i took it and i remember getting that led to having to get a wallet so i could carry the pepsi got a habit card and i just thought it was so cool i i don't i don't remember that. Sorry, I, th- I think I cut you, but um, I don't quite remember what C- Crystal Clear Pepsi tasted like. Like that, that kind of was a reference years later, where people people said it tasted real bad and it was shunned. But I think at the actual time, it it probably wasn't that bad. No, I was I was definitely a fan, and I think it tricked you into thinking like somehow. I mean, I, this wasn't like. A concern when you're a kid, but like I always thought it was like healthy to drive. I thought it was like kind of water like, like, well, I could have water or I could have crystal clear Pepsi. It's crystal clear, you know, and like that. And now I'm cripplingly diabetic. No, I'm just kidding. But I just drank that all the time. I right. got a, some crystal clear here in this. Uh, nice. Ohio. Love it. I love it. Um, uh, and Claude Lemieux, I mean, what do you got for that? Because that's that is a, I can't turn down a hockey conversation. That's you know my second favorite subject matter to discuss. It was one of my favorites to discuss too. In fact, like obviously I've been really good friends with, with Chris Buffalius, your last guest for years, and we talk so much hockey. And I'm I'm surprised Claude Lemieux's never come up because he, I hate him more than any athlete. I don't know even know why, but like I was I think genuinely afraid of him. As like as like a twelve or thirteen year old, I thought like he was just pure evil, and I hate the Devils, um, but I mostly just really hated Claude Lemieux for whatever reason. Which team did you root for growing up outside of Cleveland? Uh, Penguins all okay. the time. I'm sorry to say that. I know you're a ah, Flyer. What, uh, what am I going to be <laughs> mad at you for for you know liking the team that's closest to where he lived? You know. Yeah, I think it was just, I was a huge uh, Mario Lemieux fan, and Yager, obviously. I wanted to be Yager in fifth grade. I I actually wanted to have, like, a mullet the and hair. everything, because he did. But, uh, yeah, I always rooted for the Penguins. But if, it, if when it was the Red Wings and the Devils, like, which was pretty often back then, it was, I always had to go with the Red Wings. I loved the Sergei Fedorov, like, Paul Coffey, like, all of them. I was yeah. a huge fan. Now, Claude Lemieux, I mean, he, you know, he put the Flyers out of the playoffs big time in that year where they had, uh, it was a lockout year, and then they started the season in yep. January. It was 95, and, and that was like, the Flyers had missed the playoffs four straight years, and then they finally get back in in 95, and Claude Lemieux just dominated that series and earned his, you know, Mr. Playoff name. And he yeah. was a dirty player, too, so. He was, Absolutely. And uh, I mean that's saying a lot when the you know the Flyers like that, that was like the Legion of Doom era, wasn't right. it? Yep. I had mad respect for Eric Lindros at that time, but I know he kind of fell off and got kind of sketchy like uh, later in his career. But I don't I don't know if the Legion of Doom was in. I know I, I believe that might have been the Stanley Cup year, and if I'm wrong, I, I'm upset that there's video footage of me getting that wrong. But yeah. I, that, that might have been '97. Um, I think yeah. So I don't know. I will. I will be checking that as soon as this interview's over. But <laughs> if this part's missing from it, I'm going to call you out on that. That's like, fine. <laughs> well, that on was, several flyers message boards that I'm sure exist. I can. I can name you any flyers memory. I'm. I'm more like, at, like from college on. I mean, I was always a flyers fan, but mm-hmm. I didn't actually retain the information in the '90s because I think I was just too young, and I don't know. But, um, all right, so you tweeted today about um, AOL Instant Messenger, and, and the tweet, I have it printed out right here, says, Years ago, I got into adding random AIM names to try and get to know the person behind the screen name. My favorite was Peanut Butter Breath. Tony, is, is, there, <laughs> is there any truth to that tweet, or were you just trying to be funny there? No, it's 100% truthful. Um, I would... I would I'd like just think of like the most ridiculous thing and add it, you know, like oh, I bet someone has that on AIM, and that was one I added, and it was one of the few people that actually responded, and they were kind of just I was like, hey, peanut butter breath, <laughs> like that's your screen name, like you obviously eat a lot of peanut butter, and their response was, 
not really. <laughs> so I tried to like dig a little deeper. I was like, so like, what? Why'd you go for that? Was it like an alliteration thing? You just thought it sounded cool? <laughs> They're like, I like peanut butter. It'd just <laughs> be funny to make it my. And I was like, well, it is funny, and it kind of left off with that. But that was the best response I got. Usually it was just like profanity or just you know, being blocked or warned, getting warned. Was- <laughs> oh, yeah. You used to warn people on purpose? Oh, absolutely. Like, <laughs> friends. Like, you would just warn your friends to be a dick. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm losing here. I forgot all about the warning. And then you'd have a percent next to your name in the in the buddy list. You could see, like, you yeah, know, when the yeah. person was signed up, they had a 30% warning. Humiliate your friends, but like, oh, so and so got one. They were messing with somebody, and then you but could... I don't know the jerk at AOL that was like, "This is something we need to have," you know. And I, I've tried to carry it over to Facebook and like be kind of a jerk and mark something I don't like as spam or something. It's just not the same, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, hold on. you got. Oh. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, yeah, you could warn somebody. When they had an away message up, like you could IM them, then get yep. their away message and warn them. You know, they had to respond to you to get a warning, yep. but you could just sit there and IM somebody, get their away message, and, and warn them on the fly. And then when they and, get back and see their computer, they, you know, have a 100% warning. And what was the punishment? Like, I think it was just you couldn't send a bunch <laughs> of IMs in a specified amount of time. Like a dialog box would come up and say, You've been warned too many times. So basically, you could probably like ruin someone's life warning them. You know, <laughs> you could like it's like you know someone's girl, like guy's girlfriend's trying to get a hold of him. He's blocked on aim. Like you could at least temporarily really screw up that guy's life. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you remember um, the percent n code that you could put in uh, like your profile or an away message? So like if your if your screen name was was like Tony Hartman twenty three, I would just put percent n smells in 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 my uh, away message, and then when you would look at my profile, I would say like Tony Hartman smells. Yep. There was some people. If anyone, but I wasn't an HTML expert like that. But uh, uh, I, I it, saw it wasn't uh, HTML. It, it it was you know those codes were listed like on when you went to go do your away message and. <laughs> Um, but some people actually took that serious. Like they thought that they were the screen name picked and you know, I, I, you know, I just from the band and stuff, I had random people on my buddy list and they're like, I'm not listening to your band anymore because you, you said something oh, bad about oh. me. See, aim can ruin lives <laughs> and careers. Definitely. Uh, another, speaking of ruining lives, my favorite thing to do was like, if you, if you liked a girl and you would get one of your friends to talk to her. And they'd have a whole conversation about you, and then that person would just copy paste the conversation and email it to you, and you could just read what that girl was saying about you. They had no idea, you know, that you were going to see the conversation, and that yep. was just a great invasion of privacy. That yeah. I, I don't think that kind of thing is utilized on Facebook or or anything like that, unless you get someone's password or something. It's not, but um, I actually just this is kind of relevant to that. Um, I just learned about this site. I think maybe it was taken down, but I read about the guy that started the site called Is Anyone Up? Which everyone might know about. I might be really late to this, but it was like, it's like public, like public humiliation porn, kind of like, and it sounds like the worst thing ever. Like you, you're mad at an ex and you would go on there and post like pornographic image with their social media links. Oh God. Yeah. And it, and it legit does like, you know, at least temporarily ruin lives. But what's what would be funny if we started doing if we still had like those aim convos if we tried to like post those on there like and people would just think it was the lamest thing like who cares but, like you know to <laughs> us that that's how you mess with people on the internet not this posting naked pictures stuff that's, right. that's silly there there would be times where I it's I would set, you know copy paste the conversation. And then send it to somebody, but then I'd alter the answers of what the person said because it's just text, and you, you know. So I'd have the other person's screen name. And I was like, oh, I don't like what they said to that question. Here's what they probably would have said, and then I would email. I mean, there's just so many plagiaristic things that could happen with with AIM. Absolutely, and 
a side note to that, uh, there was this, this guy that, uh, was, he's an AIM all-star. We could have a whole nother, like, chat about this guy, Mike Clays. Uh, the punchline guys are very familiar with him. Um, re- real quick side of the story, he, the last time I saw him, it was like 2003, and we, we, uh, had to come at him because he was pretending he was, uh, Paul Menatiades from Punchline on AIM to, like, meet girls. Okay. It, it, it got, really out of control and like we found out about it and called him out on it and then he just disappeared have not seen him since wow but this guy uh, he would print aim combos and like they were always fake like one time he he got tom DeLong's uh aim name somehow and he's like he talks in this real high-pitched voice he'd come up and be like hey guys look who i was talking to on him and it'd be the fakest like like so fake to the point where it'd be like tom DeLong was like you're the funniest guy ever <laughs> Like, and just be like, Clay, this is bullshit. You know, like, it's so easy to fake this. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we could talk about Clay's. We could I, do a Criterion collection of this conversation and have a, the whole Clay story on it. All right. I'm not trying to one-up you, but but you said something. And this is this is probably my brilliant aim. My No, no, I've got two brilliant aim schemes that I pulled. Um, I roomed with uh, Justin, who was the singer for Ritter. I roomed with him at Kutztown for his freshman year. And we both had, like, you know, the cream-colored computers, you know, on two different desks, and we'd just sit on AIM for hours, and we just wouldn't talk to each other. We'd just be talking on AIM. And I remember I created some kind of screen name, like, Sexy Girl 773, changed the font to, like, a pink font and stuff. And so I I M'd him. He's sitting next to me. I'm like, hey, you're the lead singer of Ritter, right? And he's like, hey, who's this? And I'm like, oh, this is Michelle. And then I'm just talking. He's sitting right next to me, and I'm I'm talking to him, like kind of hitting on him and mentioning songs. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, February is my favorite song. He's like, ha-ha, thanks. He's like, I, I really like that, you know. So you remember the the website hotternot.com? Absolutely, yeah. So I took, you know, I just found some random girl on there and, you know, traded pictures with him. And send you know, and he's just like, "Hey, you're pretty cute." And then I just I couldn't take him. As you can see, I'm very bad at keeping a straight face, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's on aim or just this conversation. Um, so I just you know turned my computer monitor and just he was he was not a happy camper. He was not happy about that one whatsoever. It could have gotten a lot worse. It sounds like he has more self control than like most like guys, especially guys in bands in that situation. You're like. This is why I do it. Sexy girls on AIM. <laughs> I think... It's a lot worse, for sure. I think it's just because it was just typical behavior of me. Like, he yeah. he wasn't that humiliated because it's just something I would do. So, you know. I think he was probably just sick of rooming with me at that point, And then just everything, you know. Um, well, the last thing is, to, when you're roommates with someone and in a band with them, you're pretty much beyond married anyway at that point. Oh, like. Yeah. That's how we all were too. It was it, it was tough, but I, I feel like things got done. But yeah, we definitely, you know, hated each hated each other for the for the year that we lived with each other, and then when we were apart, we got we got along just just fine. Um, but the second uh, aim ruse that I, that I pulled was, and I'm not going to give the screen name out, um, but because this is actually uh-huh. this is punchline related. We played a show with them in uh, Wayne's. Wayne, Waynesburg, West Virginia, isn't it? No, it was it was like a suburb of Pittsburgh, uh, you know, Western PA town. That's West Virginia, though. Actually, I think it's just below the border. I could be wrong, though. Um, so we, you know, good show, and uh, I guess I gave a girl my screen name at that show, and there was just some girls that the minute you signed on. You know, boom, I am. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? And, you know, you didn't want to, like, I, I guess, you know, it was easy to tell if you were being blocked because you could just sign on another screen name and see I if thought- that person was on. Yeah. So, um, I guess Andrew in my band, he gave out his screen name as well, and she would do the same thing to him. So, what we did is we just created a bunch of screen names of her own screen name. Uh, so I, it was something like, you know, Ladybug Girl 20, 27. 
So we created Ladybug Girl 28, Ladybug Girl 29, and we just attacked her with, hey, I want Ladybug 27, like, you know, and cursing at her and saying terrible <laughs> things, because she was just so annoying to us, we just wanted to terrorize her on, on Instant Messenger. I still feel like, in that case, the terrorist won, because she demanded so much of your guys' attention to do that. You let the terrorists win. I know, but see, I'm. This is probably, you know, I, I might have told some friends that at, at, in in passing, and yeah, this is documented now. But it was so long ago. I'm still. I, I still think it was a good idea, just because of yeah. the the crazy things you could have done on on instant messenger. Any other instant messenger stories? That <laughs> man, I feel like, like I said, there's there's just so many. But uh, when you're talking about you were talking about how like. I always had the like girls that would IM you as soon as uh, you signed on. As problematic as that is, I can't really feel too bad for you because I always got guys. I got the same reaction. I would like were people. You are... guy... Were you the guy that booked for your band? Yeah, it was our drummer Matt and myself kind of split it. Okay. For whatever reason, uh, I got all the guys. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like... Just seemed like a nice guy at shows, and, you know... Okay, like, uh, you know Joe Polito, right? Yes. Of, of the band Breakaway. Right. I believe we've discussed this. Right. Uh, or, but I feel like he was kind of cut from the same mold of just, like, cool cool band guy. I'm a self-proclaimed cool band guy. and uh, That might be true, Tony. I, I, I promise you, out of all the bands we've ever played with... I have never seen, like, he's always the guy at his merch table. I have never seen, like, a semicircle of girls around him more than any other guy I've ever seen. I'm, t I'm telling you, that guy oh. it attracts girls like, you know, like no other. I was really hoping I would at least have Joe Polito in my corner as a, a real guy's guy. I, but, I, uh, I'm sure he's that, too, I'm, you know, because he was the guy that... That did all the booking, and, and you know, so he had to buddy buddy with guys to make contacts. But that guy, and I think at, at the show at the roller rink too, I think he had like, you know, some Ohio girls coming up to him, if I remember correctly. So, he'll, I'm I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. Um, all right, we do a crazy segment here on JoeyRitter.com called "Turn It Off or Turn It Up." All right, I'm gonna name five songs, and you simply tell me. If you turn them off or turn it up. Okay. And if you'd like, we can discuss the song. If I disagree with you, I'll probably jump in and start arguing with you. Perfect. But All here right. we go. Uh, first one is Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson. Turn it off. Okay. I don't hate it, but turn it off. I, I, I think I agreed with you up until like 2010. For some reason, I got satellite radio, and when I listened to 90s on 9... That song would come on, and it was always a song that I would turn off, and, and, you know, if it was on MTV, I'd switch it. But then, as, you know, as it started playing, I'm like, wait a second, all right, I like the build up here, and, you know, I'm, I, for some reason, I'm into that song now. Yeah, maybe, I don't, I don't want to go back on my answer, but I'll turn it up, even maybe if I'm by myself, just to do impressions of it. <laughs> I love doing impressions of that song. I'm not going to do one now because right. <laughs> it's still accompaniment, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll still go with Turn It Up. All right. Um, El DeBarge, Rhythm of the Night. Turn It Off. Uh, I don't know. About that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have that one, I guess. It doesn't do anything for me. All like, right. Technically, uh, you're not. Crash Test Dummies, mm, 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 mm. Turn It Up, easily. <laughs> Absolutely. Great song. Um, here's another mm mm. This one is mm bop Hansen. Um, I'm pretty apathetic to that song, but I will. Hansen does have some legit good songs. I think I would turn it up. It, it, uh, I have good memories attached to this, my eighth grade Washington, D.C. trip. Uh, big <laughs> field trip we took five days. Uh, I remember that was around when mm bop was really popular. Right. And so everyone. Uh, everyone was rocking Bop. I was listening to, the, I think, uh, my favorite album at the time was Mighty Mighty Boston's uh, Let's Face It, I think was the album title. So I was rocking that at the okay, time. Okay, yeah, so that was like 97. Yeah, 
But yeah. I remember on, on the bus uh, on that trip, my friend Adam saying, yeah, I don't like that Mbop song, but the one girl's pretty hot. Right, right. Yeah. Definitely the first three times I saw that video, I was convinced that was a girl. But I thought it was Alex Mack, actually. <laughs> You remember uh, the, the Nickelodeon show Alex Mack? No. Okay, well, he looked just like her. But. <laughs> um, all right, uh, last one's Breakfast at Tiffany's Deep Blue Something. Um, Turn it up. All right. Good song. I like to cover that. I just, Les and Jake, I think, covered that maybe. Really? Some, really good cover that, yeah. With, like, yeah. horns and yeah. stuff? Oh, yeah, of course. All right. I have here, Tony, called uh, a book called The Book of Questions. Can you see it? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, there are 200 questions in this book. Some of them are, you know, a little dark. Um, I ask that you pick a number between 1 and 200, and I will ask you the question. Okay. I know I can't pick thir- uh, 37. You cannot pick 37. That, that was that was so perfect, the, the question that it, it landed <laughs> on. But uh, Absolutely. So... I'll go with six. That's good. See? All right. All right. Here we go. All right. You discover your wonderful one-year-old child is, because of a mix-up at the hospital, not yours. Would you want to exchange the child to correct the mistake? I guess that means exchange it for your real child. Right. After a year. After a year? Maybe I might like the real thing. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot of cool babies out there, but, you know, like, I think as a parent. The one that you worked on for nine months, yeah. Really, after a year, though, you might know differently, but how far can you, how cool can a kid be after a year? Let's be Um, honest. Look, okay, now I gotta be like, oh, I have a kid, but, uh, you know, I have a three month year old, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just. When the kid looks like you and, you know, you just start to see, I, I don't know, you, you have to have your own kid. I can't, I can't, I can't explain it so any I'm other way. In taking, taking the, uh, the replacement kid back and getting the normal one, right? Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Um, and I don't know how you would be so dumb to know that the kid looked nothing like you. Well, I guess a lot of babies, it takes them a while to develop their uh, facial features, but... yeah. When 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 uh, my daughter was born, I mean, it was a hundred percent me, and like n- not my wife at all. So, well, that, that's strange how that would possibly work. But uh, no, seriously. So yeah, take the kid back. Get your- <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to do another one? I think that was a good question. I think we should roll with the momentum here. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go for it. Bonus question. W- w- give me a number. Uh, let's go with uh. 66. Mario Mario Lemieux? Is that Mario Lemieux? uh? Yep. Okay. Do you feel that advice from older people carries a special weight because of their greater experience? That is... I mean, it it depends on what you're asking about. If I was asking how to use Skype, absolutely not. They don't (laughs) If I was asking about the good old days, then absolutely. Um, no, I mean, I, I think there's a lot you can take from, from older generations, but I think they should listen to us, too. Right. All right. Let's go hip, guys. Tony, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you did a brilliant job, as I knew you would, and you're welcome back on JoeyRitter.com at any time. Um, again, thanks for uh, any any last words. Um, I don't know. Check out my Twitter. Joey's a big fan. Uh, it's Tony, and then a little uh, dash at the bottom, and then Hartman. I am and a Tony. big fan. All and, right, Tony. Uh, thanks a lot. We're, we're starting to cut out again, so let's uh, let's uh, talk sometime soon. Thanks for having me, 